Hey friends and neighbors, this is Robert at Daybird Aviaries. Look at these two goofballs. They got out of their cage while Jeremiah was seeding them. These are yellow-sided green cheek conures, and they are actually the parents of those yellow-sided dilute green cheek conures that are still in the cage. Those babies were born last year. And we need some more nest boxes for our conures, and so I had a friend build me the, the shell, the outer box. They're eight inches by eight inches, and they will stand up 16 inches high and he left it for me to cut the all the holes into the box for the birds to get in and out not that he couldn't have done it he would have done a wonderful job probably better than us but anyhow we're gonna put hooks at the top and then we're gonna put an inspection opening a door on the back and it'll be square I would have done a four inch round hole if I could have found my hole saws, but my teenagers have misplaced them. I use this piece of old fence board I, that's left over from where I built that barn door. I used it as a storyboard, as a template to lay out the holes for the inspection. I marked that off and it wasn't quite where I wanted it to, so you'll see how this works in just a moment. You line those lines up at the very bottom. That was too close to the bottom, and so I moved it down an inch. And then you just use a marker to mark out the holes. And there's Jonathan doing a wonderful job. So just mark that out and then he's going to turn the board sideways and finish off the bottom portion of it. Look at that. Makes that so easy. So simple. Just like that. Now we're going to drill some holes in it so that we can use the jigsaw to cut them out. And here's our little helper. Jeremiah found a new hat. Would you look at that? Silly kid. He's just using a spade bit to put some holes in this. You could use a regular drill bit. It just has to be large enough diameter around to be able to get the jigsaw in. And I'm telling him to put another one at the opposite corner just to make things easier. He probably could have figured that out on his own. But it's good to have a And there goes the elusive Daniel. He came out to feed the lorikeets. And there we go. Just follow the line. Just as easy as that. He's going to go back the other way to clean out the corner. I told him later that I really didn't mind if those corners were left in there. That it wouldn't affect anything. But he wanted to get them all cut out. The time. He's such a goofy kid sometimes. I was standing on the cord so he couldn't go any further, so I, he had to stop and fuss at me. And there's Catherine. She didn't want her grandmama to be shown. I'm not concerned about that. Okay. I'm just saying that's why. And there you go. You can see the opening 
That's going to be the inspection door on the bottom back side of the nest boxes. That's going to be so that we can check on the eggs and the babies and even the parents if we need to. And so we can clean the boxes out periodically and put fresh pine showings in. And here he is, he's drilling some starter holes. He's going to use the jigsaw and just make some weird, almost, well, rounded, not circles, but he's just going to use the jigsaw to cut out some entrance holes for the birds to go in and out. We could have used something to trace out a circle. We wanted to use a hole saw, but I couldn't find my hole saw set if you live with teenagers that help then you know that things don't always get put back where they belong like i said we could have used a, a jar lid or something to trace out a circle but i told him that the birds wouldn't care and just to go ahead and and cut it out any way that he wanted so he tried to do circular shapes and i think it's just fine He's going to drill some pilot holes in the upper corners to put hooks in so that we can hang them on the cages. I don't think you can see the marks, but he measured down one inch from the top. And you drill through the face of the plywood into the plywood that is onto the sides. Now we use these, they're called screw hooks, and these are the best that we have found to ever use. They have a really long screw shank that goes deep into the wood and you just have to get them started and use pliers. Sometimes we can use a screwdriver to put into the hook and twist it around but I figured out a better way and I'm going to try to show Jonathan. He's not convinced. I told him that if you open up the chuck of the drill that you can use the Teeth, the three teeth of the chuck to sit right on top of the screw hook and twist it in real fast like I said he's not convinced he doesn't think that it's that good an idea but I finally do convince him and he he keeps at it and he, he figures out how to do it like I said we have 12 boxes so that's 24 hooks to put in he's just being a goofy kid you have to get it started with your fingers, just twist it around a little bit. And then if you get the drill set down right on top of it, it'll just screw it in very quickly. Look at that. Look at that. That's a helpful hint if ever there were one. We've used cup hooks in the back and there there's screws on the cup hooks or the, the threads are just not they don't go in deep enough and so they tend to pull loose it's just not their intended usage but here you go here's the box with the entrance hole cut and the two hooks and the birds can get in and out these are for green cheek conures and and other small conures like black cap and painted conures and crimson bellies and rosy fronds and even half moon conures and brown throats but look at here jeremiah got tired of the mud so he went and put on daniel's size 13 mud boots and he's just so proud of himself again he's such a happy kid so easy to get along with jonathan is now now he's going to cut the the actual doors that are going to cover over the inspection holes on the back just out of plywood he makes short work of that doesn't he it's good to have help Here's one of the boxes where I cut the inspection hole and you can see I didn't clean out those rounded corners. But that's okay. 
We're going to put a screw at the top and the screw is going to act as a pivot hinge and we'll put a screw at the bottom and that will act as a stop. And you'll see how that works in, in just a moment. I've used this design for quite a while. You could hinge it. You could, you know, if you had a dado blade and you were making your own saws, you can cut grooves to make the doors slide up and down in. But this works exceptionally well for for me and my purposes and you can see now how the door pivots upwards and so we're going to finish up this video uh, tomorrow god bless you bye bye y'all give us a thumbs up make sure to subscribe